All right, good afternoon, everyone. Let's get going here. So you already ready to start it. chapter eight? Excited? Yes. Thank you. Uh, all right, so chapter eight, um, there's, I thought about whether or not I wanted to do like an introduction problem to kind of like be like, you know, where are we, where are we going to, you know, what's going to be the purpose of all this, but I'm going to hold off on that. I want us to get right into the material and that way we don't spend 20 minutes talking about things we're going to talk about later anyway. So let's just get right in. Uh, chapter eight is called series and the first section in this chapter 8.1 is called sequences. So we're gonna, 8.1, we're gonna talk about sequences. Once we understand what a sequence is, then we will get into series. That'll be the next section, because there is a difference between a sequence and a series, all right? So what is a sequence? A sequence, most simple um, definition is this. A sequence is a list of numbers. And that's it, all right? It's just a list of numbers. Now, really a sequence can be something else. It can be a list of functions. It can be a list of anything, really, a list of objects, vectors, it doesn't matter. But for us, we're just gonna look at a sequence as a list of numbers. Now, this list of numbers can be finite or it can be infinite. So let me give you an example of each. Now, when we write a list of numbers, we usually use a brace. And then we just start listing the numbers. So here's a list of numbers. One, two, three, four, uh, dot, 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 comma, 10. Close it off. And that right there is an example of a finite sequence. Finite because there's a finite number of things there, right? There's 10 numbers there. Now you could also have an infinite sequence that would look like this. Um, let me give you a different example. Two, four, six, eight, ten, dot, 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 and close it. Now the dot, dot, dot here means that it keeps going forever. So this would be an example of an infinite sequence. That makes sense? I mean, it's pretty, pretty basic there. You either have a finite list of numbers or an infinite list of numbers. Now, in general, we can write this this way, okay? So a general way you could write a sequence is, is like this. You have some number, your first number, which we, like, we usually denote A subscript one, then A subscript two, then A subscript three, a subscript four. Now, if this continues and stops somewhere, A subscript N, this would be finite. And there would be N numbers here, right? There's N numbers in the list. If we have an infinite sequence, we would just do a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, comma, dot, 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 close it off, and this would be an infinite sequence. So what I have here in green is kind of like the general notation that we use for sequences. Now there's other notation that we can use. Okay, so if we do this, uh, sorry, a sub k, This is, it's kind of like the sigma notation that we use, where you have some, you know, where you're adding a bunch of things together. This we're not adding, we're just saying, look, we have a list of numbers 
the first one we start at k being one is a sub one. Then the next number is a sub two. And we keep doing that until we get to a sub n, we stop. So these two things right here, the k equals one and n are kind of like the starting and the stopping points of the sequence. So do you all agree that that would be an example of a finite sequence? Right, this would be, this would be finite. Now, if we wanted to do an infinite sequence, infinite, we could do this. Start at one, end at infinity, or sometimes you'll just see this. Or sometimes you'll even see this. In other words, if you put on the outside of the, the brace here, k equals one to infinity, that's being very specific that we're gonna start at one and end at infinity. But if you do not put anything on the outside, right? If you don't put anything out here, then it is implied that it's infinite, all right? It's implied that it goes from whatever, k equals one to infinity, or in this case, the last one, it's n equals one to infinity, okay? So all of those are examples of a notation that we would use for an infinite sequence. Any questions? All right, now, now what is a sequence? At the, at the end of the day, what is a sequence? I mean, it's a list of numbers, right? But I want you to look at it in a slightly different manner right now. So I'm gonna give you like a second definition. A sequence is a function from the natural numbers into the real numbers. Now in math, we like to denote that this way. It is a function that goes from the natural numbers. Now, maybe you've never seen this before, a double struck N into the real numbers, double struck R. Now y'all seen this double struck R for the real numbers, right? But the double struck N is what we use for the natural numbers. Now, what are the natural numbers? The natural numbers are the numbers one, two, three, four, okay, all, all your counting numbers. Okay, so I'm telling you that it's a function, that a sequence is a function where it takes in a natural number and spits out a real number. So I think the best way for you to see this is by me giving you an example, but let me show you in a picture. The way a sequence works is that you plug in a natural number, <clears throat> it goes through some function and comes out as a real number. So you're only allowed to plug in one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the only inputs you're allowed. You are not allowed to plug in one half. <clears throat> you're not allowed to plug in pi, you can't plug in square root of two, you can only plug in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Only, only a natural number. And then it goes through the function and they come out here as numbers, right? Whatever they are, they're numbers. So we have to define that function. If we ever want to look at a sequence, we have to define what the function is. So let's take a look at a specific example. Let's say that we have a function, let's say f of x, where it's x squared. And I'm telling you that f is gonna go from the natural numbers into the real numbers. So f of x equals x squared, we should all be familiar with. We know what that looks like, right? But we have this very important additional piece of information, which tells us we're only allowed to plug in natural numbers. So if I go and try and look at the graph of this, is it going to be a parabola? No, it can't be a parabola because I can only plug in, well, I can plug in one, right? And when I plug in one, one squared would give me one. I can plug in two, and when I square two, I get four. And when I plug in three, I square three and I get nine. 
right? But I am not allowed to fill in the gaps between these because I'm only allowed to plug in natural numbers. So this sequence is, when you look at the graph of the sequence, it's just a bunch of dots. Do you all see that? It's not a nice, smooth, continuous graph. It's just a bunch of dots. Are we clear on that? Okay, so is there, is there a way that I can do this where I can tell you that the, the sequence I'm talking about is x squared, but without me having to tell you this every time? Like, oh, hey, you're only allowed to plug in natural numbers. So we have a new kind of, not a new notation, but we have a way of, of writing sequences so that you know I'm talking about a sequence. Instead of using f of x, I'm gonna write a sub n, and then over here, I'm gonna write n squared. This is the notation we would use to define a sequence. I am telling you that the nth term of the sequence is n squared. So using that, what would be the first term of the sequence? So if I replace that n with one, I come over here, I say one squared, that would give me one. The second number in the sequence, I would plug in two, two squared is four. The third number in the sequence is nine, fourth is 16, and so on and so forth. So this notation right here is the notation we will use to define a sequence. We, will, we are not going to use the f of x notation because we really wanna reserve that notation for when we're talking about real functions that we've done in the past. So we're just looking for a notation that allows us to distinguish the sequence from a regular function. Any questions? So there is a big difference here. If we say f of x, equals x squared, that's a parabola, right? We can draw it without picking up our pencil. If we say a sub n equals n squared, now we know we're talking about a sequence and you're only allowed to look at the dots on that parabola and only on the right-hand side, right? You don't pick up, you're actually not gonna pick up the, the zero and you're not gonna pick up any of the stuff over here. Everything's gonna to be to the right. So if you're talking about a sequence, this is very important. If you're talking about a sequence, everything that we've done in calculus is not on the table because we don't have continuity. This thing over here on the right is not a continuous function. And so we don't have a derivative. We don't have integration. None of that's there, right? because it's a completely different object that we're looking at than, than the one on the left. Okay, so you might be going, well, what the hell's the use of these things, right? Um, make sure I've got all this down. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, yeah. Let's do, let's do another example of a sequence. Another example, specific example. I'm gonna define a sub n to be equal to one over n. Okay, let's list this sequence out, all right? Who wants to volunteer? I'm gonna be calling on people today, or I'm gonna to want participation today. <clears throat> Let me bring up my roster here. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's see, um, Brian, you're first. Brian Vasquez, how are you, Brian? Good, well, sir. How are you? Good. So, can you list out the numbers of this sequence for me? So, would it be one, and then one half, one third, one fourth? Yeah, you've got it, right? And then plus, uh, not plus, and then dot dot dot, and then close it because right now there's no specification given to us that that sequence needs to stop somewhere, right? So if it doesn't tell you, you're just gonna assume it goes forever. 
Now, most of the sequences that we will deal with in this class will be infinite sequences. We don't do much with finite ones. We will do a little bit, but not, even when we do finite, it's only because we're gonna take a limit and go to infinity anyway. So we have very few finite sequences here. Um, all right, let me, let me try this one. Uh, well, you know what, here's, here's what I like to do. This is where things start to get really fun. How about I give you the sequence and you try and give me the function. So I give you the so list. When was the numbers. case? When, <clears throat> say again? When was the case when we only use uh, real numbers? Wasn't it for this? I'm not sure I understand your question. So I, I thought whenever we were using sequences, we're supposed to use just real numbers or not say um, a whole numbers. Okay, that's the input, okay? so Like one, input. two, three, not one. Yeah, so what, what Brian was doing was he was replacing the N with, first he replaced it with one. So he said, okay, what happens when I plug in one? I get one over mm -hmm. one. So that's this one, right? That's A sub one. Then Brian said, okay, and now I'm gonna replace it with two. And I get one over two. And that's the second one. See, you have to, you have to, Remember, these numbers that you're seeing here, these are all the outputs, okay? Your input is this number, this number. Do you see, it's the subscript of the A that's the input. The number that comes out. So we can consider the output to be real numbers? Yes, the output or can, can be real numbers. They can be anything, I mean, any numbers. They could, they could turn out to be just, natural numbers also, but they are not restricted. The thing about a sequence is that the restriction is that the only numbers you can plug in are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, right? Those are the only things you can plug in. The out though can be anything. Is that okay? okay. So, so this list of numbers that we're looking at is a list of the outputs of the sequence. It's the list of the outputs of the function. We know what the inputs are. Right? We know what the inputs are. One was the input here, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm gonna now give you a sequence. I'm gonna give you the list of numbers and I'm going to ask you to give me the, the actual, the function itself, which would be this thing. Now I'm gonna ask for volunteers. If you volunteer and you answer, I'm gonna mark you down and then you can't answer again until it comes back to you, all right? So just keep that in mind, all right? So here we go. So what I want is I want for you to tell me what the A sub N is for this sequence. And we're gonna start easy and these are gonna get harder. That's, that's about as easy as it gets, but sometimes it's so easy it's hard. So any volunteers? Is it just N? Okay, a sub n equals n. Okay, so good job, Cameron. Cameron, you are, um, where the hell are you in here? There you are. So Cameron is saying, oh, okay, this is just a sub n equals n. So if I plug in one, it spits out one. If I plug in two, it spits out two. If I plug in three, it spits out three, right? There you go, okay. All right, what about this? Good job. Um, how about this one? What is a sub n if your list of numbers is uh, three, 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 three? Okay, who wants to volunteer? Is it three? It's just three, right? A sub n is just three, because regardless of what you plug in, you're always going to get three coming out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, if you answer, you don't get to answer again until I tell you you can. There's only 13 students in here, so we should get through everyone. Uh, let's see, next one. Okay, so what's A sub N? I'm not gonna stop writing that down. Here's the, here's the list. Um, 
negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. I can keep going. I'm just going to stop there. Hmm. Let me negative. also say, who, what? I said negative three plus n. Negative three plus n. Okay, Monado, hold on. We will do that, but let me say something first. So look, everyone, <clears throat> I told my other class this. I didn't tell, I haven't told you all this. This section, what we're going to start to see as I call on people is that for, for some of you, this is just going to click. Like, it's just going to be like, got it, got it. And for others, it's going to be like, I'm just not seeing it, you know, and it's, this is a very difficult thing to teach, all right, because it's one of those things where you, you kind of have the light bulb go off or you don't. And so I'll do my best to try and help make you get that light bulb to flip for you, but it is very hard for me to teach you how to see a pattern, okay? There's little things we can look for that, that I guess we can use all the time, but it's, this is really about pattern recognition, all right? So Monado, you said what now? I said negative three plus n. Negative three plus n. So did you have any idea, like, did you have any, um, can you share with us, like, what made you think that? Mm, I, I, so I saw that you went from negative three, but it wasn't a finite sequence. So you had to keep adding from negative three. So negative three was, was the starting point. And you had to do something to it to get to negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, which is just adding one mm -hmm. and every single time. So that had to be N. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many different ways to look at it. Now, is this going to work though? So you start at one, so you would have to subtract four. Yeah. Monado, do you see that? That if we, we always have to start at N being one. Later on, n can be something, n will be zero later, but for today, n is one. Okay, so if n is one, we plug one in here, we actually get negative two. And we actually need it to be negative three, don't we? Right, so, so it's we should probably four. take one more away. Gotcha. Let's see if that works. So now, when we plug in one, right, so a sub one would be negative four plus one, which is negative three, good. A sub two should be negative four plus two. That should be negative two. And we know that each time we keep doing this, it's just going to keep going up by one each time, isn't it? So this should give me negative three, negative two, negative one, one, zero, one, two, three. Do you all see that? Yes. Okay. So here's the way I think is a way you can look at this. Do you all see back up here with this sequence right here? A sub n equals n. The thing about a sub n equals n is that it jumps by one each time, right? Each time it jumps by one, jumps by one, jumps by one, right? It just keeps going up by one. And that actually comes from the fact that there's one in front of that n. So we want the sequence we're looking at jumps by one each time, doesn't it? It jumps by one. The difference is that it starts at a different place. So what we have to imagine doing is taking this sequence here and shifting the whole sequence over. So I want to make this one, I wanna make that one become a negative three. I wanna make the two become a negative two. So in order to go from a one to a negative three, I need to take four away. In order to go from two to negative two, I need to take four away. In order to go from three to negative one, I need to take four away. So instead of looking as, as just isolating yourself here, and just looking at this, just think, okay, I need a jump of one each time. So I know I need N. And then I need to shift this sequence, one, two, three, four, five, back to three. Make sense? So I subtract four. Okay, let's, let's so th this, this sequence is very important because we're gonna use it for other things. Like we'll use it to build other sequences. Uh, I have a question. Yep. So is there any way that a sequence can start with a negative N with a negative N. Oh yeah, you could start with negative N. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But that wouldn't have worked here. Like negative N wouldn't have worked because mm -hmm. it would. If you do negative N, it will give you 
negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, you could put a negative on it. There's no restriction on what you can do. Oops. So here's another one. See if you understand this idea. Sorry, the brace starts to look really sloppy. I get, I get really lazy with it. So how about this? One hundred two, one hundred three, one hundred four. Okay, so let's see. Um, that was Monado. So who else? Volunteers, volunteers. Is it yeah. n plus one hundred one? Kelsey is n plus one hundred one. Good. So they they keep jumping by one each time, right? So we know it's going to be an N in there, and then we just need to shift it. So by adding 101, we see that when we plug in one, we get 102. Plug in two, you get 103. Good. So that'll work. All right. So far, everything okay? Next one. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, somebody who has not answered, volunteer. And multiplied by two. Who said that? Uh, Sydney. Oh, there you are, I'm looking for, there you are, okay. Sydney, uh, what'd you say, N multiplied by two? Yes. So just like two N, right, two times N? Yeah. What do y'all think? Yeah, that works, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So this is an important sequence, okay? Because that sequence creates, this creates the even numbers, right? even and it creates it starting at at two that's the even starting at two okay let me mark um kelsey you answered right and uh, i was yeah i was last time okay and then sydney just went okay all right so that's one okay how about this one what if i wanted the even numbers but I wanted them to start at zero instead of instead of uh, two. Who's gonna volunteer for that one? Um, two n minus two. Two n minus two. Two n minus two, not one, right? Two n minus two. Does this work? Plug in one. What do you get? You get zero, right? So in other words. We know, we know, I'm gonna, I'm trying to cover this up. Look, we know that 2n by itself creates the list 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. But what we wanna do is we wanna shift each of those back two, right? We want that two to go back to zero, the four to go back to two, the six to go back to four. So we have to take two away from each one of those. And that's why we go 2n take away two. Make sense? This is even. Starting where? Zero. Zero. Okay. That was Chris, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Now, odds. What if we want to create the odds? And let's start the odds at three. I mean, at one. Sorry. One, three, five, seven, nine. Who wants that one? who has not answered. Is it N plus two? N plus two? Wait, no. So, so N, you said N plus two. N creates just one, two, three, four, five, right? Plus two would just add two to each one of those. So it'd be- Is it, is it two N minus one, sir? Two, well, I don't know. Do you think it is? Oh, you said minus one? Yes, sir. What do you think? Yeah, that looks right. So look, think about it this way. What does 2n create? What does just 2n create? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? But if I take one away from each one of those, the 2 becomes 1, the 4 becomes 3, the 6 becomes 5. So I'm shifting the evens back by 1, which gives me all the odds. Right? So this will be the odds starting at 
one. Good. Okay, how about this one? Uh, who answered last? Uh, Collins. Answer. Collins. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Here we go. Who wants that one? CJ, did you answer already or no? I attempted. All right, so, okay, so you're volunteering for this one then? Sure. So just tell me what you see here. Well, it starts at negative 12. Okay. And it goes up by two. Okay. So how could you create the, the jumping by two? Create the jumping by two for me. How do you do that? Two N. Okay, all right. But we know if we do 2n, that's gonna give us the even number starting at two. Where do you wanna start? Would it be minus 14? Hold on, hold on. Well, minus, minus 14. Minus 14, there we go. So the 2n is gonna create the evens. The evens are two, four, six, eight, but then you wanna take away 14 from that to create negative 12. Take away 14 from that Sorry, that's so crappy to give you negative 10 and so on and so forth. Y'all see that? So you want to look at this as, oh, I see that this is just even numbers. I just started further back. I start, started further back than starting at uh, zero or at two. Okay, Abe, I know you were, you were itching to answer there. Sorry for cutting you off. Um, I'll give you, I'll give you one. I eight. was wrong on my guess. All right, Abe, how about this? Nobody answer. I'm going to, I, I want to help a process this, get, get through this, all right? All right, so Abe, tell me about what you see from number to number, what's happening. So it, the pattern is increasing by three. Three each time. And it starts at 11. Okay, so how would you create the jump by three? What do you think you would do to create a jump by three each time? It'll be uh, plus three. I'll say N plus three. How did, okay, so you know what, in the previous problem, the, the even numbers, right? Two N, Mm -hmm. creates a jump by two, doesn't it? A jump by two each time? Yes. If it's just n by itself, it's a jump by one because there's a one in front of the n. Here we want to jump by three. So not- so it'll be not three n? Plus three, three n, okay. Okay, so that should, make a, that should make us jump by three each time. Now, where do we want to start though? Because right now, if I start, and I let n be one, I'm gonna get three, right? I don't wanna start at three, I wanna start at 11. So what are you gonna to need to do, Abe? Plus 14? Plus, you wanna to get to 11. Plus 14? If I put 14 here, uh -huh. then when you plug in one, we're gonna start at oh. 17. That's too much. Oh. What number would you have to plug in right here so that when you plug in one, you get 11? Eight. Eight. Good. Does that make sense, Abe? The number eight? Yep, that's right. Does yes. that make sense? That is correct. So now check it for yourself. We plug in one, we get 11. We plug in two, that becomes a six. Six plus eight is 14. If we plug in three, that becomes a nine. Nine plus eight is 17. Do y'all see that? 
So mm -hmm. in general, when we're doing these formulas, if we have some number k in front of n, this number here is how much we jump by each time, right? That's, that's how much each one increases by. And then you can add to that something, I'll just call it p, some number, that will move that, you either add or subtract it, that'll move it left or right so that you can kind of find what position you want to start at. Is that all okay? So the pattern for the jump is always multi multiplying the number. For example, we had the jump by two, so we were multiplying n by two. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like here's another one. If we did, let's say we did 10, 15, 20. 25, 30, right? Dot, dot, dot. We would notice that it, that it jumps by five each time, right? So I know that I'm gonna need a 5n. 5n plus five. And then I need to start at 10, so I need to add five to that, exactly. All right, you ready for the next one? These are gonna start getting fun now. That one gets three stars because of how important it is. All right, volunteers, anyone who has not answered, which looks like it's, there's only a few that haven't. I should probably see if these people are even here. Let's see, Vincent, Vincent has not answered. Is Vincent actually there? Vincent? So I'm looking for Vincent on my roster. I don't even see Vincent on my roster. Who's Vincent? I'm not going to lie. I don't remember ever really hearing that name like ever once yeah, this I'm whole gonna, semester. I think I'm going to boot him out. Not sure who that was. All right. How about Rania? Yes, I'm here. Okay. This one's tricky. Any ideas? Negative one, one, negative one, one. So is there anything that you think of at all when you see like one negative one or negative one, one, is there anything that you think of? The inverse? Okay. I mean, multiply a factor by the inverse and you get one, I don't know. So what we want is this, Rania. We want, when we plug in one, we want it to turn into negative one. When we plug in two, we want to turn into positive one. When we plug in three, we want it to plug into negative or turn into negative one. When we plug in four, back to one. Five, back to negative one. So Rania, am I saying your name right? Is that all right? Yes. So Rania, is there anything that like little neurons that fire in your brain that when you see even numbers, you get positive, but when you have odd numbers, you get negative. I'm not really clicking. Okay, that's okay, that's okay. So let me open it up to the, Kelsey, did you raise your hand? Uh, is it like a squared? Uh, can I take a shot? Or a cubed? Okay, CJ? Is it one or, yeah, negative one Q? Or no, one, negative one to the N. Negative one to the N, there it is. That's it. Negative one to the N. All right, this is a very important sequence. We're gonna see it a lot. In fact, 
just to, sh I'll put it back up there in a second, just to show you. And if you didn't get this, this is okay. This is why we're here. Um, if we go to our formulas later on, there's this formula sheet right here. See this formula sheet from a chlorine series? Look at this, negative one to the end, negative one to the end, negative one to the end, negative one to the end minus one, right? It's gonna be all over the place later, all right? So negative one to the end, let's see why this works. Let's see why this works. If we plug in one, right, we get negative one to the one, which is itself, negative one. But if we plug in two, we're now taking negative one and squaring it, which gives us positive one. Then when we plug in three, we get negative one cubed, which is gonna be back to negative one. And then when we plug in four, it's negative one to the fourth, which goes back to positive, right? And it keeps just gonna keep on um, cycling through negative one, one, negative one, one, negative one, one, right? Does everyone see that? All right, you need to know this formula, all right? You need to know it. Now, tell me if this would do the same thing. Would this also work? So what would happen here? I plug in one, what would I get? Negative three? Three which three. would be negative one to the negative three. I mean, sorry, negative one to the third, which would give you negative one. Then when you plug in two, you would get a four. So negative one to the fourth would give you positive one. This, this would do the same thing, wouldn't it? Yes. And I think even anything added to even power would do the same. Anything added to N as long as what you add is an even number. So if I do n plus two, n plus four, n plus six, n plus eight, n minus two, n minus four, n minus six, n minus eight, it doesn't matter, I can add or subtract. Okay, all of that <clears throat> is this. Okay, next one. One negative one, one negative one, one negative one. So Kelsey, you were on to it. You were getting there. You were you, you had the idea, you just right. Yeah. Um, so this one would be um n to the n plus one. Okay, negative one to the n plus one. That will work. Because what you're doing is you're saying, okay, now when I plug in one, I want it to be a positive one. So I need this to be an even power. So plug in one, you get two, negative one squared is gonna be positive one. Then you plug in two, you get two plus one, that's three. Now you have negative one to an odd power. Another way you could look at this, and this is kind of cool if you look at it this way, is that isn't this the same as negative one to the N times negative one to the first power, right? Isn't that how properties of exponents work? That if you have the same base and you're multiplying, you add the two powers together. You'll agree with that? So look, if you look at it this way, negative one to the N created that list up here in yellow, didn't it? But all we do is we hit each one of those with another negative one. So if I hit that with a negative one, it becomes positive one. Hit that with a negative one, it becomes negative one. Hit that with a negative one, it becomes positive one. Does it, do you see? You could look at it that way also. But the formula you need to know and, and memorize would be that, okay? Another very important one. Any questions? Are we having fun yet? I know we are. You ready? Negative two, five, negative eight, 11, negative 14,
All right, so we have Rania, I called them, Rania. Chris is I think I've gone through everyone, unless I'm missing. If I missed you, I'm sorry. See, Yuri, did Yuri, you answered or no? You haven't answered, have you? Not yet. Okay, are you ready? I'd like to offer some assistance. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give it away. Let me ask you this, Yuri. If the negatives weren't there, if they were all positive, could you do it? Like if it was just 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, could you do that? Probably. Okay. So how much would each... So you're ignoring the negatives right now, right? How much are each one going up by? If you're ignoring the negatives. They're going up by 3. By 3. So you would need what? 3N, right? 3N. Okay, but would that work? Because if you plug in one here, you would start at three. Where do you want to start? Yeah, negative two. So how much would you have to take away from this in order for it to start at two? No, no, not negative two, Yuri. Oh. Just the two. You're not thinking about the negatives right oh, now. Oh, sorry. That's two. okay. Two. So, you to want to start away one. At two. so you're going to take away one. Does everyone agree that that right there would create the list of numbers 2, 5, 8, 11, neg or 2, 5, 8, 11, 14? Yes? Yes? Okay, so I'm going to put that in parentheses. Now, Yuri, can you make it alternate in signs? So can you start with a negative and then become positive, then negative, then positive? Didn't we just do this? Isn't that what this mm -hmm. allows you to do? It's start negative, then go positive, negative, then positive, then negative? Yeah. So why don't we just slap this to the front? Do y'all see what I just did? Or what Yuri and I did? We, we created the alternating, num the alternating mm -hmm. signs, okay? This right here took care of the alternating signs and this right here took care of the numbers and we multiply them together right does that make sense everyone um i forgot to tell you um by the way i forgot to tell you and this is pretty pretty big deal i forgot here both of these that i put stars next to each other these are what we call alternating sequences, obviously, because they alternate in signs, right? Positive, negative, positive, negative, or the other way around, negative, positive, negative, positive. All right, Yuri, is that clear? Do you have any questions on that? Uh, no questions. Okay, no questions. All right, we're moving on. I have a question. Why isn't it um, like N plus a even number? Oh, because it's the same, right? n plus an even number so the one up there it's like negative one n plus even yeah is that the well, same i can use any even number so the one that we prefer is zero that one right okay. there okay but i'm just saying so later on be the same. Get plus two go ahead what would, would it still be the same if you like put yes. n plus two okay. if you put n plus two it would do the same thing uh i have a question yeah so instead of using the notation negative one n, can we do negative in front of the three n minus one and do um, and and square it, not square it to the power n plus even? Like that? And and to the power n plus two? All, all of it? Yes. Like the whole thing to the n? No, 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 no. Just a three n minus one. No. Because that n is acting on this, this right here, instead of acting on the negative one out front. This n, this n power is acting on this binomial, not on the negative one. Okay. I thought I heard, I heard whatever noise, I thought it was in my house. I was like, what the heck was that? Okay. 
All right, let's let's keep going. I mean, so, more. So how about this, Professor? What would you do to change instead of the two, the, the negative two instead of the other number? Take the negative sign. Negative five, negative eleven, and plus two and plus eight. What would you change? Okay, so you're saying to have the same sequence just with flip signs. That one, right? Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so what I would do, what I would do, so now that we've done one problem, here's the way I'd look at this. I would look at that and I would say to myself, this is an alternating sequence. It starts positive, then goes negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. To do that, all I have to do is use this. That was the one that I think Kelsey gave us, right? This creates the sequence one, negative one, one, negative one, one, negative one, right? Then I would say, okay, I've taken care of the signs. Now I just need to make the numbers. They all jump by three, so three N, but I need to start at two, so I subtract one. That's the difference between those two. The N plus one and the N, that's the difference. Does that make sense, Abe? Hmm? Yes? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Hold on. Who's my next volunteer victim who wants to be up? I'm gonna give you a hint, okay? If you... <clears throat> Does this alternate? Okay, it does alternate negative, positive, negative, positive, right? So we can take care of that by just doing negative one to what power? N. N, because we want to start negative. Okay, that takes care of the negatives. Don't even worry about the negatives anymore, all right? That's taken care of. Now we have these fractions, right? We have these fractions. Don't get all freaked out about the fractions. Look at the numerators and then look at the denominator separately. Tell me what's happening in the numerator. What do we have, the what's the numerator? Is it a 2n minus two? I mean, sorry, 2n minus one, sorry. Yeah, so the numerator are just the odd numbers, aren't they? One, three, five, seven, yes? So I can create odd numbers by saying, multiply that times, here's a fraction, my numerator is 2n minus one. That creates all the odd numbers starting at one. And then now the denominators are also odd numbers, but I'm starting where? Five. At five. So I can do that by doing 2n what? Plus two. Mm -hmm. Oh, three. Plus three. Plus three. Plus three. So each of these jumps by two, right? And I need to start at five. That's it. That creates the sequence. So basically, all of this is like dependent upon the odd, even, and the alternating sequence. And if we know them, we can like use them, use them to graph every, like to get the sequence for everything. You wish. It, do, it doesn't. No, this is not enough. We there, there's still a lot more to do. But this is the base, like this is the foundation, okay? We have to know how to do the alternating. We have to know how to do odds and evens and things that jump up by the same amount. We need to be able to do those, like to start. But there's more, okay? You ready? I'll give you more. Here's a new one. Uh, 
I think it's n plus one square. It's just n squared. Okay, I've heard n plus one squared, and I've heard n squared. Let's see, let's try this. If I plug in one, I get one plus one is two, two squared is four. So that, that doesn't give me the first one. If I do here, if I plug in one, I get one squared, which is one squared, which is one. one. Then I plug in two, two squared is four, but that doesn't give me the two. Right? Minus n. Where, here? On n squared one? minus n. Yeah. So a sub n equals n squared minus n. Let me say something. These are not jumping up by the same amount each time, are they? No. Okay, so this like 2n and 3n and 4n and 5n, not gonna work. It's gotta be something different. Um, let's see, these first two didn't work. Is that okay? Do you all agree those don't work? Mm -hmm. Okay, how about this one? If I plug in one, I get one squared is one, minus one is zero. zero. No, that's not gonna work. Okay, so look. You have to, we have to realize that all of those numbers have something in common. They are all even. Yes. They are all doubling. They are doubling. Yes. They are doubling each time. Is it the square root of n? Mm -mm. Is it 2n? Who said that? Ronya. Right. That's that's it. So look, these are all powers of two, two to the first power, two squared, two cubed, two to the fourth, two to the fifth, right? Oh now, what's this one though? Two to the what? Uh zero power. Zero power. So it's not two to the n. Watch, let's try it. R Ronnie was right on it, but we're a little bit off. Okay, two to the n power. See, notice that it's the power that keeps changing, right? Right, one, two, three, four, five. The base two is always the same. But see, we don't want to start at one. Where do we want to start? Zero. Zero. So two to Zero. the n minus one. n minus one. So two to the n minus one. Two to the n minus one. So n minus one, if you look at that n minus one up there, n minus one by itself creates the sequence zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And then we're using that as a power on two to create the sequence we're looking at. Does that make sense? So there's your first example of one that is not, not a odd even switch, you know, it's, this is something different. All right, let's do another one. All right. See if that's enough for you to get the pattern. Everything we looked at now, we're trying to put it all together in here now. Create the sequence, build it. So first is the alternating. Okay, so what do you want me to put? Negative one to over n. To raise to the n, right? Yes. That will create your alternating. It'll start at negative one, which is what we want. Okay. Yes. So we don't have to look at that anymore. Time. So times uh, the uh, the odd sequence. On top, right? The numerators yeah. are odds. Okay. Numerators, which will the be two n negative one. Careful. Where do you start? You don't oh, start at one. Plus one. Plus yes. one. That will create your odds starting at three. Three. And, and then, then would be four to two the n, n power. 
two n squared. Four to the n. Will four to the n work? That's this is oops. This is four to the first power. This one is four squared. This one is four to cubed. Um, I heard someone say two to the something. I, I you two to the two n would also work. But two to the two n is the same as two squared to the n, which is four to the n. So that, that, that would also work. Do y'all see that? Do y'all see how this works? Create the alternating, create the odds on top starting at three. All the denominators are powers of four starting at four to the first, four squared, four to the third, right? All right. As you might imagine, these things can get pretty, pretty crazy, right? Like you can pretty much come up with anything. All right, so let me give you another one. Oh, sorry. That's type problem, just you shake your head like, what the, you know? Let's do a little one, one minute Jeopardy. Nobody respond yet, okay? Just see what you, see what you can do. All right, anybody have an idea? I just have the idea for the alternating sequence. Okay, what part, what, how can you make it alternate? Uh, negative one, N plus one. N plus one. Everybody okay with that? That'll take care of the alternating part. For the... Anybody see any other patterns? Go ahead, Ron. Uh, I don't know if this is right or not, but... Uh... But I was looking at like the numerator part of it. Would it be like two n plus one? Two n plus one for the for the three, five, ten, negative fifteen, twenty. That part. Yeah. Two n plus one would would mean that it jumps by two each time, right? And they're not jumping by two each time, are they? It jumps by two here, but it doesn't jump by two there, or there, or there. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Right. No, no. I mean, it's it's good to think. That. So, look. Let me give everybody a hint. Does anyone have it or have another conjecture here? 
let me let me have you consider focusing all your attention just on these for a moment. Look at the numerators. <clears throat> what are they jumping by each time? Five. 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 Five, right? Okay. What about the denominators? What are the denominators? They're all, there's something important. Three. 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 There's the square. square. The first power. Three. This is three this is square. Three. This is three cubed, right? So now let's go backwards from this pattern and see if this is the correct pattern that is jumping by five each time and that the bottom is a power of three, then what should the, what should this one, what should this one really be according to our pattern? What should be on the bottom? Five over three over zero. Three, three to the to zero, zero, right? On the top, it should be five less than 10, which is five. And five over three to the zero is five, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Three to the zero is one. So that is, that is correct. That is the right thing here. Now let's go back one more. What should the pattern be if we go back one more? Ah, oh, shit. Oh, isn't it one over three to the negative one? No, I screwed up. This should no, be zero because it would become over zero over three to the negative three to one. The negative one. I screwed that up. So this oh. one should actually be a zero. Zero. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and that's my fault. That's me trying to make up the problem in my head before, you know, trying to make, I was trying, I, it would have worked if I would have jumped by six each time. Cause then when we would have gone backwards, we would have had negative one. So it's okay, just change that to a zero. Just change that to a zero. And now if you change to a zero, do you see that you'll have, this will still work? Because what's three to the negative one? Just bring the three up on top, right? So this is really just three times zero, which is just zero. Are y'all following me? So how do you create something that jumps by five each time on top and starts at zero? Five n minus five. Minus five. And then on the bottom, we need to three go three to the n minus three two. to the n minus one. Minus two. 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 Because you want to start at, remember, this one is, this one was three to the um, zero, and this one was three to the negative one. Negative one. So we want to start at negative one. So we plug in one, take away two, you'll be at negative one. There it is. I apologize, everyone. That was my mistake. I'm not quite sure that mistake prevented you from getting it, but you know, this seeing this pattern in here and working backwards is is a good uh, thing to do. Do y'all see how this is working though? Instead of trying to look at the numbers as one big number, we're trying to like break the number up into its pieces and create the pieces. All right. I have another one. Um, I, I don't know if you'll be able to get it because I don't know what your knowledge is of this, but um, one, one, two, six, uh, 24, So we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this. You've either seen this or not seen this. Um, this sequence is created using what's called N factorial. So I'm gonna stop. We're gonna get back to that answer. I want to talk about N factorial. N factorial is the notation we use for it is this. You may have seen this in a statistics class. It's N with an exclamation point next to it. And what I'm gonna do is before I define it, I want to just give you an example underneath what, what it is. So if you write five factorial, what that means is five times four times three times two times one, and you stop when you get to one. So. If, Five factorial is just a way of me telling you I want you to multiply five times the next 
number um, one less than it times the next number one less than that, and you keep going until you get to one. So this would be, what is five factorial? Five times four is 20 times three is 60 times two is 120. So that's 120. Four factorial would be four times three times two times one. And that happens to be 24, 12 times two. Three factorial is three times two times one, which is just six. Two factorial is two times one, which is two. One factorial is just one, which is just one. And the last one here that I'm gonna show you is zero factorial. And zero factorial is not zero. Zero factorial is one. Little star next to that. We define zero factorial to be one. We define it that way. And I know that this causes a lot of students issues, like why is zero factorial one? And it's not something that I can answer in this class. All right, it, it's just, it's beyond the scope of this class. You have to get into, um, well, I'll, I'll talk about it later. How about that? I'll talk about it when we get a little bit further into chapter eight. I'll talk about why zero factorial is one. But it, ha it, it, it has a very, um, no, I'm gonna stop because we'll, I, I will just go off on a tangent and I don't wanna go there. All right, so anytime we define something in math, we usually write it this way, zero factorial, and then we put a colon in front of the equal sign. And the colon in front of the equal sign means that we are defining something that way. Like we are saying that's what it is. Okay, so that little colon right in front of the equals means we're defining zero factorial to be one. All right, now, Going back up to what I have in red, n factorial would then just by definition mean you take the number that's given, then you multiply it times one less than that, then you multiply it times one less than that one, and then one less than that one, and you keep doing that multiplication until you get down to one. That is the definition of n factorial. N factorial is really just shorthand. It's like a shorthand notation. That's all it is. Now there are some very nice properties of N factorial. Okay, there's some really nice algebraic properties. So let me show you some of the properties of, of factorial. So look at this example here. What would N plus one factorial over N factorial be? We're going to see this a lot, this exact expression. So just tell me by definition, what is the numerator? You start with what? N plus one. N plus one. And then I multiply that times what? N plus one minus one. N plus one, take one away, which would just be what? N. Okay. And then by? And then n minus one. Yeah, and then minus two. And you just keep right. going, right? So you get to one. All over the bottom, which is just n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way till I get down to one. Right? And do you see all the stuff that cancels? And what am I left with? N plus one. N plus one. So there's another way you can see this. Do you see this N plus one factorial when we wrote it all out? Do you all see that everything here to here, do you all see that that was just N factorial? The N times the N minus one times the N minus two. Do you see that just from here down was N factorial? And so what we could have done is we could have done this. We could have rewritten this as n plus one times n factorial over n factorial and then killed off the n factorials and got n plus one. 
That's the shorter way to do it. Does that make sense? I'm gonna give you another one underneath it. How about this one? How about 3n plus two factorial over 3n factorial? So which of these is bigger? 3n plus two factorial or 3n factorial? Which one of those is bigger? I think the denominator. You do? Top one. 3n plus two is bigger than 3n, isn't it? So this is gonna be a bigger number that you have to do, you know, keep on chipping one away on it each time, right? So let's try this, let's do the numerator. The first piece would be 3n plus two. Right, then times, what do I multiply that by? Three. Subtract one, right? Subtract one, so what do we get? 3n minus one. 3n I mean, plus one, plus sorry. Two minus one, right? Which would be plus one, right? So I'm taking, I took one away from this. And then what do I do? And then just 3n. Yep, 3n would be next, then another, keep on going, right? But do you all see that the rest of this, like instead of me writing out the rest of it, I'm just gonna put 3n factorial because that would be the rest of it, wouldn't it? Actually, I did that wrong. 3n factorial would be the rest. So what I'm saying is that there's a bunch of crap that keeps going this way. The 3n factorial is the rest of it. 3n then 3n minus one. But why did I stop at 3n factorial? Why did I stop there? Because it's the denominator? Because that's the denominator, right? And then they cancel. And so this is your answer. These two multiply together. If you're not seeing this, okay, if you're having trouble seeing this, let me give it to you in a, in a more simplified version. Let's say we had 10 factorial over 8 factorial. I could rewrite that as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But 8 times 7 times 6 times, I can't even say, all that multiplied together, that's just 8 factorial, right? And I can cancel that with the 8 factorial on the bottom. So all of this goes away with that and all you're left with is the 10 times nine. That's exactly what we're seeing here in this problem. We have a number that's bigger on top than the bottom. So we peel off a few of these until they match, right? And once they match, we cancel. While I'm talking about this, let's look at three N factorial versus 3n factorial. Are those the same thing? They are not the same. No. No. See, the first one means three times n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way till I get to one. The other one means 3n times 3n minus one times 3n minus two, times 3n minus three, until I get down to one. And those two things are completely different. So in other words, the parenthesis around the 3n is not there just for fun. It has to be there, because this would be different than this. I guess another way you could look at that is if I had, let's say three times four factorial, versus three times four factorial. The first one is three times, and then four factorial is four times three times two times one. And the other one is actually 12 factorial, which is 12 times 11 times 10 times nine times eight. See, you see how different these are? Okay.
And hold on, let me do, let me give you this. Um, no, I'm not do that. Okay, I, I think I'm ready to move on. We've got about 20, a little less than 20 minutes. All right, so now, now that we've had some opportunities to look at, oh, we, that's, that's what it was. We hadn't finished this problem. There, this one. This right here, this sequence, a sub n is n minus one factorial. Because you have to see that this is zero factorial, this is one factorial, two factorial, three factorial, four factorial, five factorial. So some of you all, um, I know Monado and Cameron, I think, I don't remember who else, maybe Brian stayed behind last time or like one couple of classes ago and we were talking about the binomial expansion theorem and the Pascal's triangle and we saw how the factorial was used, right? It's very useful in statistics and in math. Um, we are going to use it a lot. Um, in fact, this might be a good, a good time to show you what the um, definition of E is. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but E to the X, okay? E to the X, if you wanna know what that is, right? You just get on your calculator, like E squared, you just put it on your calculator. But if you wanna know what your calculator is doing, here's what it's doing. It's doing one plus X plus X squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial, plus x to the fourth over four factorial, plus x to the fifth over five factorial, forever and ever. So that's a place where we see factorials. Um, if you wanted to, you could look at this first term as x to the first over one factorial, and then, or sorry, the second term, and then this term one, you could look at that as x to the zero, over zero factorial because x to the zero is one and zero factorial is one. In other words, all of these have an x on top to a power and then they have a factorial on the bottom. So if you go on your calculator and you do e squared, that's the same as plugging two in for each of these x's. So that would become two plus uh, two squared over two factorial plus two cubed over three factorial, plus two to the fourth over four factorial, plus two to the fifth over five factorial. So you could go on your calculator right now and do these computations and you would get a number that's really close to E squared. And that's exactly what your calculator is doing. It's using this formula right here to calculate E squared, but it goes out a lot further than here, it keeps going. I don't know, it has a predetermined, whoever programmed the computer, decided how far to go out. And you can always adjust that tolerance. But that's an example of where a factorial appears. And I'm gonna take you back to that formula sheet that I showed you earlier. I want you to look at these formulas and how many times the factorials show up. Factorial, factorial, factorial. Oh, this one doesn't have factorial. Okay, so about half of these have factorials. So we will be playing with those. All right, we've got to get some, we've got to get some calculus out of the way now. Okay, we've got the idea of what a sequence is. Um, I've given you a bunch of sequences to try and create the formulas from, and now you have an idea of how to do that. 
now we have to unfortunately talk about calculus. So what is the limit of a sequence? What is the limit of a sequence? So this is back like a Cal 1 topic, except we're talking about a sequence, not a function. So what is the limit of a sequence? So, um, we will write limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals L, or we may just write a sub n with an arrow pointed to L when as n gets large, a sub n gets close to L. So this is slightly new, new notation. As an example, the sequence a sub n equals one over n that has an arrow to zero. That sequence one over n has a limit towards zero. Why? Well, because if we start writing the sequence, right? What is this sequence? One, one half, one third, one fourth, right? What's happening to those numbers? They're getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? They're headed towards zero. So the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n, I think we all would agree that as n gets big, that goes to zero. And so the limit of that sequence is zero. Very much like what we, what we had said before, right? Like with functions, we take a limit, right? So there's not anything like really new in terms of the idea of the limits, the same thing as it was before, but we're gonna run into a couple of problems, all right, as you're gonna see here in a minute. So if, if a sub n goes to L, we say the sequence converges. If, well, I'll say otherwise, it diverges. So when we talk about sequences, if I say, hey, CJ, does this sequence converge? What CJ is going to do is he's going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of that sequence, and he's going to figure out whether or not he gets an answer. It's always the limit as n goes to infinity, though, always. All right. If you want to check the check for convergence or divergence of a sequence. So let me give you another example. How about this sequence? A sub n equals n over n plus one. Does that sequence converge or not? Well, we, right, so I'm asking, does this converge or does it diverge? I think it converge. Okay, so how would you show that? Limit and go one over of n over n plus one, right? That's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what does that approach? Uh, bigger number and then bigger number plus one. Okay. So it would be the denominator would obviously be bigger. Only by one though. So yeah. the numerator is headed to infinity, right? The denominator is headed to infinity? Mm -hmm. 
So you have infinity over infinity. How do we handle infinity over infinity? L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule. But we have a problem. Because L'Hopital's rule means we need to take a derivative, right? Yes. And these things are not functions. Remember, they're not smooth curves, right? They're not smooth curves. When you look at a sequence, it's just a bunch of dots. If I were to give you a sequence with a bunch of dots and I were to say, hey, everyone, go to that dot. What's the derivative? What's the slope of the tangent line here? There's no way you can talk about slope of tangent line. You don't have a curve, right? You don't have the idea of a tangent line. Do you all follow? Is, is there any discontinuity? On the sequence? Yes. Everywhere, almost. I mean, you have discontinuities everywhere. It's just a bunch of dots everywhere, right? Yes. You have a bunch of gaps. Everywhere where you have a gap is a discontinuity. If we're trying to look at it as a function, like a traditional function, what I'm trying to get you to see is that sequences are not functions. So when you're trying to take a limit, you can't use all the rules that we had before, like L'Hopital, because you are, you're not looking at a function, right? You're not. So that becomes an issue. Do you all agree that's going to be a problem? Yeah. So here's the way we could do this one without L'Hopital. We could just do some algebra. Multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over n. So I'm being clever, and I'm coming in, and I'm introducing that right there, 1 over n times 1 over n. And now, when I distribute through, I get 1. And on the bottom, I distribute here and here, I get 1 plus 1 over n. And now, if I do this and let n go to infinity, this we know heads to 0. Right, one over a huge number should still go to zero. So this limit is approaching one over one, which is one. So does it converge or diverge? Converges. It converges and it converges to one. Do another one. I think this will be our last one. So how about a sub n equals negative one to the n? We should all know what that looks like now, right? What does that sequence look like? Negative one, one, negative, negative one, 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 negative one, one, negative one, one, negative one, one. Does this converge or diverge? Wouldn't that diverge? Yeah, so what what makes sense, let's write it out. This is negative one, one, negative one, one. <clears throat> if we were to take the limit as n goes to infinity of this, well, this is going to infinity, negative one to the infinity, that's going to go back and forth, right? It's still gonna be like negative one, one, negative one, one, negative one, one. Is it headed to one place? No. And since it's not headed to one place, it's switching back and forth. It's got to be diverge. OK. We have finished today's lecture. I'm not going to do any more right now. Um, we still have a lot to do in 8.1. I barely even scratched the surface on 8.1. Barely scratched the surface. But if you look through 8.1, we spent almost the entire time with me getting you comfortable with the idea of creating the formula from the sequence, right? The book does not account for that time. In other words, they don't spend all that time doing that. Like they go, they go right into it. So I do that, I spend so much time doing that first part that we did today, all of these examples that we did because I've been teaching this for a long time. And when, when students don't have this down, when you can't figure out a formula from a sequence like this, you can't figure that out, the rest of chapter eight, you're, gonna, you're not gonna be able to do it, all right? 
Chapter eight won't, won't happen for you, all right? So I invest almost an entire lecture on just that to make sure that we can step our, our next foot in front of the, the other one. Unfortunately, that means that there's not a lot of examples out of the book for you to do. So for homework, page 434, page 434, there's problems five, five through eight, where they give, you, they give you a sequence of numbers and they ask you to find the formula, okay? We are not ready to do the rest of the problems yet, okay? We're not ready. So just do those. And then let me see if I can find something. Let me see if I can find something real quick for you to look at in addition to that. See, the thing is on a test, you're not gonna, I'm not gonna be giving you a sequence and asking you to find the formula. It's kind of, well, you know what? There we go. I did an, on this one, I did. Okay. There we go. There's two more problems for you to do. Try and come up with uh, formulas for those. Uh, I hope that's not a typo. I don't think it is because this was on a test. So I'm pretty sure this is right. That part B might be tricky. See how you do with it. These are just for your own practice, okay? You see if I have any more. And we're still going to have the test on the 10th, right? Is it the 10th? Yes, sir. A week from today? Yeah, that would, yeah, because it's just gonna cover Eight, it'll just probably end at eight one. Yeah, let's plan on it. It'll probably only cover eight one. Let's plan on for right now, okay? Okay. All right, let's call it a day. And I will see you all on Thursday, okay? All right, sir. Have a nice day. All right, make sure you get all your homework yes, for seven, chapter seven done, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Will you be uploading? Can, is it possible to get the notes from last week, from last class? I, I thought I sent them. Did I not? I think you did. I don't think so. I, yeah, I got them in an email, I thought. I sent them in an email. Because you asked for them, right? Look, I'll send I'll send today's I think that was the pre I'll send today's in the previous classes in an email. Okay? Okay. okay. Thank you. Give me a minute. I, I'll take care of it in a little bit. Uh, did you upload the the video from the last class? Or it's just the note? Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I'll go check. That would have been from Thursday. Yeah, I'll yeah. go check. I'll get everything up to date. If it's not. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Anybody else? Okay. Have a good one. Thank you, too. Have a good day. Thanks, Professor. Have a good day.